So good afternoon, everybody. Um, we want to thank you for being here today. So we wanted to do this press conference to kind of put out there that one of our detectives, Detective Sue Cormier, um, has been spearheading a project that we've worked very closely with the ACI, with um, our partners in local and federal law enforcement, to come up with a deck of cold case playing cards that in cooperation with the ACI and um, Director Patricia Coyne Fague and also Chief Inspector Robert Catwell, that these cards will be distributed um, through the commissary at the ACI and they're going to entail one of the open cases throughout the state. So, what the detective did was she joined forces with all other agencies um, throughout the state with all open cases that we had for open homicides. And we put these cases together in hopes that even if we solve one case this year, it'll be a great achievement for us. Without the help of you know, the public and the local agencies, we would not be able to do this. So since these cases have been, I don't want to necessarily say cold cases, but we have not gotten further information in such a long period of time, we figured that if we put them out there with the help of the public, we might be able to solve even just one would be a great success. So I'm going to introduce um, the director. She'd like to say a few words, and then I will introduce uh, Detective Cormier, and she will go on to what she has spearheaded for this project and what it's all entailed. Director? Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. My name is Trish coyne Fagan, I'm the director of the Department of Corrections. When Detective Cormier came to us with this uh, proposal, we immediately uh, wanted to join forces with her. We know this has been a successful thing in other states, and to the extent that uh, the Department of Corrections, in partnership with our, our partners in law enforcement, to the extent that we can participate in something that would bring justice and maybe a measure of closure to families uh, struggling with unsolved homicides, we, we were all for it. And we're very excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. The, the one thing I did want to mention, too, is without the cooperation of the families, um, this would not be possible. So I asked you just to be respectful that they, you know, we do have family members in the audience. And uh, so we'll be able to, she'll be able to answer questions, Detective Columbia, after. But some of the investigations are obviously, well, all of the investigations are obviously open because they have not been solved. But without their cooperation, without their continued support, we would not be able to put this together. So I wanted you to recognize the uh, members of the families that are here. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here today. At the beginning of this year, I had a meeting with my supervisors and I requested uh, my interest in working on some of the department's historical cases. I discussed some of the possible methods uh, to help generate new leads and shed light on these cases. And one of those methods was the use of cold case playing cards. For those of you that are unfamiliar with cold case playing cards, it is similar to a regular deck of cards, but instead of the normal face of the card, it has the picture, name, and brief synopsis brief synopsis of all of the unsolved murder cases and missing persons throughout the state. These decks will then be distributed in our local prison, and uh, they will be the only cards that the inmates will be able to play with. This method has been used in 19 different states and three different countries and has been very successful in solving several cases. The command staff and the chief agreed to the idea and gave me permission to move with this project. I would like to thank Chief Goncalves, Major Mullen, and the command staff for their support and for allowing me to make this project a reality. From there, I set up a meeting with the executive board at the Department of Corrections to discuss the idea, and they were extremely receptive. They put me in touch with the Keefe Company that supplies the commissary, and an agreement was made with the Keefe Company to purchase the cards that will then be sold directly to the inmates. And I would like to thank Acting Director Patricia Coyne Fig, Assistant. Director Matthew Kettle, and Chief Inspector Robert Catlow for their support and participation. Once I had the blessing of my department and the Department of Corrections, I composed a letter to every police chief in the state requesting their participation. I provided an application to be completed for each case, as well as a consent form to be signed by the families acknowledging they were aware of the project. I would like to sincerely thank all of the police chiefs in the state for their participation and to the investigators who worked tirelessly on these cases for submitting these applications. This project would not exist without all of your participation. The next obstacle was to secure funding for this project, and after talking to enough people about it, I was fortunate enough to have a discussion with my dear friend and colleague, Special Agent Steve Medeiros from the FBI, who was able to assist in securing federal funding to get this project up and running. And for that, I am truly grateful. 
The final step was design and graphics, which were done with the company responsible for making the cards. I would like to thank Dan Turner and the staff at Effective Playing Cards for providing us with a finished product that was even better than I could have dreamed of. I'd like to thank Josh Pereira from the Pawtucket Police Computer Operations Unit for helping a lot to get the uh, tip line up and running and for designing an amazing website that's going to showcase these cards. I'd also like to thank Gene Salisbury from Minuteman Press for their generosity and providing the posters that you see here today to the Rhode Island Fraud Association for a generous donation to help with the next phase of this project. And finally, to the families who trusted us to do this project. You've waited a long time for answers, and you have my word that I will continue to work hard on these cases, as will the other investigators, to seek the justice for your loved ones and to do everything to get you the answers you deserve. Thank you. So as I've stated, these cards have been used in 19 different states and three countries. So they are generally put in the prison, and the inmates uh, play with these cards exclusively. And they tend to call in and write letters in for, for tips. Sometimes it's for their own benefit, and sometimes it's just, you know, they, they want to give closure to these families. A lot of times people think these cases have already been solved. So when they see that these cards, you know, are out there and the, the families don't have any answers, so that's, uh, that's our hope. Can you talk about some of the success stories these playing cards may have had in different states? What have you heard? So <clears throat> when I started this project, I did call several different states that have these cards, and I asked them the pros and cons, and I was told each time there were only positives and there was nothing negative that had ever come out of them. Uh, I found that to be surprising and fantastic. Uh, I know personally with Connecticut, the first edition of their cards, they solved four cases. And the second edition, they solved 10 cases. The third, they solved six. And it, they are now on their fourth edition. Florida has been very successful with it. And in my opinion, at this point, we have nothing to lose and everything to gain. That some of these cases have stalled. Um, sometimes it was just a matter of a lack of technology back then, so we are submitting, you know, a lot of new evidence um, and those type of things. But again, if we can get one case solved and give answers to one family, then I will consider it a success. And how does the deck of cards work? Um, is it getting 52 people, or how, explain how that works. So there are 52 unsolved murder cases and missing person cases in our deck. Uh, the What would normally be a joker's card are actually informational cards that basically explains that this is someone's loved one, their mother, their sister, their daughter, someone they love, and a tip that they could provide just could be the key to un unlock this, this case. So as you will see, similar to the CBEC case, there are the pictures, brief stories, and the names of each one of the victims. Were you hoping that maybe an inmate will have heard something about one of these cases? That's correct. From someone else and realize, hey, I know something about this. That's correct. Sometimes they may have had a conversation with another inmate years ago or someone out on the street before they were incarcerated. They may know something and be willing to, to meet with us or to phone in a tip. They could be done anonymously. And what's the motivation? Like, what do they get out of it? Sometimes, sometimes it's uh, nothing. Sometimes it's just they felt that it's not right. Sometimes an inmate is in for a lesser crime, and they feel, you know, when they see some of these cards and someone that was so brutally murdered, they feel it's the right thing to do to give that information, or they may have thought the case was already solved. And sometimes it may be selfish reasons that they're looking to get some time shaved off by solving or helping to solve a, an old case. Which prisons do you hope to get this deck of cards in? So this will be uh, distributed to the Keefe Company, will supply the commissary at the Department of Corrections in Cranston. It's my understanding that there are 4,000 inmates, and I had 5,000 decks made. And then, I guess when an inmate goes to get it, if you could explain the rationale, are these the only cards offered, or is this, okay. This will be the only card offered for them to play with. And did every city and town participate in this? 
So we had 19 different cities and 30 different detectives. Do you know how far back the earliest cold case goes? In I do. Crime? The oldest case is 1947 out of Pawtucket, which is Rita Bouchard. Um, and then we have some that are just, you know, a, a year or so old, uh, some, you know, missing persons that have not been seen. So there's a little bit of everything in there. What is your message to maybe even some people here in the audience um, to continue with the hope that maybe justice will be served? I hope that this did provide some hope to the families and they know that your loved one's case is not sitting in an evidence room collecting dust that we do care, we are working on them. Sometimes we cannot give you information when you call and ask because it is an open investigation and there may be things that we can't tell you that could harm the integrity of the case. But believe me that all of the investigators I spoke to that are involved in this project, they do care, they do want to solve these cases and they want to give you those answers. How optimistic are you about this program? I'm very optimistic. Very. This is very personal to me, and like I said, if it were my family member, I would want the detectives to be doing everything that they could to give me an answer and my family an answer, and that's exactly what we intend to do. Do you have enough cases uh, that are currently open that you could potentially have a second edition of the deck of cards? Uh, well, I obviously hope that that would not be the case. I'd, I'd hate to see anything new, but a potential could be there for cases by some departments that were not submitted, or there could also be... Uh, solved cases put into the, the next series of deck, and as inmates um, are released and new in, inmates come in, we can continue to just put these cards, you know, in several decks back into the prison. Is there money available for you to keep printing them? And if you can talk about just overall how much this program costs, I understand you said there was federal funding. Yes, I was very fortunate uh, to obtain some federal funding to get this project up and going. So it will somewhat self-sustain. The cards um, will be sold. Keith will take care of that part of it. And <clears throat> we can use that money to continue. And there have been some other agencies that have offered to donate money to help keep this going. There are some other phases of the project that I would like to continue to do to blanket the state with these cases and get as many people talking as possible. How many Pawtucket cases are in the deck of cards? Thirteen. Chief, can I talk to you about your detective for a second? This is obviously, um, Pawtucket's put this together, your detectives put this all together, but their cases across the state. What does that say about your department and Detective Cormier? Well, I mean, it, it definitely was a joint effort. It was great that Detective Cormier took the initiative. It shows that we are progressive in our times and we're trying to get ahead of the game. It also shows that, you know, we're willing to work with all the other departments in the state. And without the support of our local um, police agencies, our state police agencies, without the support of our uh, state um, partners, without the support of our federal partners, without our mayors, we would not be able to be successful in this manner. So all, it takes all these partners to kind of get a project like this um, off the ground. And if we didn't have the support, then it would be obviously very difficult to do it. So it was great that she took the initiative, that she wanted to spearhead it. I think it shows that she's progressive in her style and that she's looking for some closure for these families. And some of these um, cases, whether it be Detective Palmier, some of the other detectives, they take these cases, you know, to heart. They've worked on these cases. They've lived these cases for years. And when a case goes unsolved, it's something that when they retire, that's usually the one thing they want to make sure is done before they leave. If you ask any detective with an open case, they want to make sure that's solved and give that family closure. So we're hoping if we can do that for one family, that's, that's a great success for us.